Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise. We have stumbled into Monday morning, February 1st, 2016. All right, one month into this roller coaster ride. And this rant is was going to be part of my economic meltdown roundup rant. But the more I think about this uh, article, the more I understand it deserves its very own uh, very own rant. I don't know where this story from the Washington Post belongs. Does it belong in my economic meltdown roundup rant, my, my, my wacky conspiracy Tuesday rant, or probably it belongs in my Saturday clueless moron rant is where it probably really makes the most sense but um, I don't want to wait till Saturday because uh, this is quite possibly the single biggest the single biggest unadulterated mountain of horseshit that uh, I have encountered in, 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 I can't remember the last time I had such manna from heaven for, uh, for a, a Luddite doomsday prophet than this. This was sent to me by my cousin, who I love dearly. And, and I can make no mistake about it. My cousin is not a clueless moron. When I'm talking about clueless morons, I'm not talking about my cousin. I know that uh, she's a fan of Chris Hedges, and my guess is she's a fan of Noam Chomsky. She, she's got to understand uh, a little bit about what's going on on this planet. So she sent me this article uh, from the Washington Post titled, The Many Reasons to Be Excited, to Be Excited About America's future and uh, <laughs> I don't know cuz I don't know what you were smoking when you sent me this article so anyway this is by some guy I've never heard of this is a man Vivek Wadwa Vivek Wadwa uh, I'm assuming this is an opinion piece the many reasons to be excited about America's future I'm going to be, I'm going to wait till the end to talk a little more about Vivek's biography, his bio. Uh, so if you want to find out more and don't want to listen to this rant, just skip forward to the end. But anyway, this is what Vivek uh, has to say about America's future. <clears throat> Every 30 or 40, I'm, I'm going to put the link to the article, so you can read this yourself if you don't want to uh, listen to your dumb uh, eco-Nazi Luddite read it to you. you can, I'll put the link on here to read to yourself for your daily laugh. <clears throat> Every 30 or 40 years, America becomes incredibly pessimistic. They begin to feel our nation is falling behind in competitiveness and innovation that their children will not be as well off as they themselves have been and that some other country will own the future. They fear that the U.S. will go the way of the British Empire in the 20th century. Blah, blah, blah. But the fears are completely unfounded. All of those doom and gloomers like Chris Hedges and, uh, and, and Noam Chomsky and Ralph Nader on the left and Alex Jones and, and that crowd on the right. If there's one subject that, that Chris Hedges and Alex Jones could agree on, there is one subject on this planet uh, that they would agree on it would be that the United States uh, it will, will go exactly the way of the British Empire. But according to WeWalk or whatever this idiot's name is, 
the United States is in fact in the middle of a dramatic revival and rejuvenation propelled by an amazing wave, an amazing wave of technological innovations. These breakthroughs are delivering the enormous productivity gains and dramatic cost savings needed to sustain economic growth and prosperity. And they are enabling entrepreneurs to solve the grand challenges of humanity, the problems that have always bedeviled the human race. Disease, hunger, clean water, energy, education, and security. Uh, good Lord, then he just dives in through, through his laundry list of the booming technological advances that are going to save the American Empire. Talking about faster computers, which are making it possible to design new forms of energy, smaller and more powerful sensors, Artificial intelligence software mm -hmm. and robots that can do the mundane work of humans. It is even becoming possible to redesign human cells and other organisms. And the really good news is that the world will share in the prosperity that this American reinvention is creating. So this is a way, so we're going to getting ready to get 1.2 billion people connected to the power grid. Oh yeah. That's going to do. We'll get, get, get 1.2 billion more people hooked up to the grid. Yes. Within a decade and a half, so we're talking the year 2030, which of course Guy McPherson is calling the year that humans will be extinct, according to this dreamer. Uh, so by 2030, we will have the ability to harness the power of the sun and the wind and to provide 100% of the planet's energy needs. And the cost of this clean energy will fall to the point that it seems free. We will be able to light up every corner of the globe and even allow children in Africa. You know that three out of four of the children being born on this planet and between now and 2050 are being born in Africa. And it will allow those children in Africa to be able to study when they get home to equip all homes, I guess every home on this planet, with heating and air conditioning and to produce unlimited food and clean water. You know, when I was reading this, I was uh, reading this last night, I was saying, where have I heard all this before? Well, uh, if you missed my, if you missed my rant yesterday, where have I heard this language before? Let me, uh, the risk of repeating myself, if you did not catch my, my, uh, my rant from yesterday. So this is the Washington Times, I mean, sorry, the Washington Post in the year 2016. Now we're going to read Collier's Magazine from 1940, an article by, uh, by R. M. Langer, a physicist at the California Institute of Technology, writing five years before the bomb was dropped on, uh, on uh, Hiroshima. 
as Collier's Magazine ran a lengthy article breathlessly foretelling the uranium-powered future. How about this quote? Energy would be so cheap it is not even worth making a charge for it, he predicted. What did we just say? The cost of clean energy will fall to the point that it seems free. Where have we heard, uh, let's see, 66 years ago. Meanwhile, roads and highways would disappear as Americans would travel in gigantic uranium-powered vehicles. And this vision of a brave new world was not some unreal, unreal, unrealizable utopia, said Langer, but, quote, a statement of fact that will profoundly change for the better the daily lives of you and yours as the foundations of the happy era have already been laid by the invention of nuclear energy. And I love this one. Uh, war itself will become obsolete. Thank you to nuclear power. That was the message from 20, I'm sorry, from 1940. I would like to have interviewed some people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, six years after those. Anyway, getting back uh, to the year 2016, to this descent in, in, into this 1984 nightmare vision of, of the planet. Don't forget about water desalination. Yes, yes. Uh, again, saving the planet and we will be able to remove environmentally damaging dams and transport water everywhere. So at least the guy is not putting hydroelectric, I guess, in, in his uh, dreams for the future. Here is... The doomsday, the, those doomsayers are out there warning that California will need to change forever and that it needs to stop growing fruits, vegetables, and almonds. But with almost free energy and desalinization, though, Sacramento River Delta will easily, easily afford to grow rice and the San Joaquin Valley can grow more almonds and and then we let's look at smartphones how about affordable smartphones are also becoming available worldwide connecting the human race as never before when Silicon Valley companies succeed in perfecting their drones, balloons, and microsatellites later in this decade, this is between before 2020, they will be able to blanket the Earth. This is Silicon Valley drones will be able to blanket the Earth thereby providing everyone with access to a sea of knowledge. And communities across the globe will be able to participate in the global economy and uplift themselves. Warning, warning, Although he kind of backs off that statement here in a minute. Okay, let's look at the advances in genomics and health sensors connected to our smartphones. 
our entire healthcare system is about to be upended. Uh, just as our bathroom scales now give us instant readings of our weight, devices we wear on our wrist or ingest into our bodies will monitor our health and warn us when we are about to get sick. Guys, I don't need a monitor. We are about to get sick. If there's anything your old, uh, your old Luddite uh, eco-Nazi has ever had to say, we are about to get sick. Artificial intelligence-based applications will prescribe medicines. There you go. Blah, blah, blah. This is a good thing. There you, in case you did not know, this is a good thing. All right, let's go on to, how about advances in robotics and 3D printing will also, over the next decade, over the next 10 years, will change the way we manufacture products that we use every day. Our home 3D printers will produce our toothbrushes, clothing, and even our food. Robots will start driving our cars and stocking shelves in supermarkets, and robot robots will care for the elderly and provide companionship. Are you hearing this, Sancho Panza? You were supposed to be my companionship in my elder years. Here is my little robot, but Sancho Panza, I hate to tell you, you are getting ready to be replaced by a robot. Okay. But, now he does kind of say this about that these, that these technology advances is an unstoppable force, one that will create great opportunities and great disruptions as entire industries will be wiped out as new industries are created. Jobs such as taxi driver and machinist will be eliminated and a few new ones will emerge. We will find solutions to the grand challenges of humanity and everything will be more affordable. But, and you, and you can take this one to the bank, uh, finally, a, finally, a, 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 the first intelligent comment I've heard in this story and, and this load of horseshit you heard it here from this guy, but income inequality will rise. Income inequality will rise because the creators of these new technologies will be the ones most to gain financially. Can you say Google? Can you say Ray Kurzweil? Can you say Bill Gates? Already the uh, richest person on the planet. So it is time to prepare for a future far different from anything than we have imagined anything is possible and that is why we need to change the national dialogue from one that is bogged down in pessimism to one in which we discuss how to make the most of the amazing opportunities <coughs> ahead <coughs> so who is this guy Vivek 
Wadwa. I love it. Vidwek Wadwa is a fellow at the Rock Center. I assume that's not short for Rockefeller Centers, but I don't know. A fellow at the Rock Center for Corporate Governance. A fellow for the Rock Center at Corporate Governance and also a distinguished fellow at Singularity University. Singularity University. I had to go on to Wikipedia and find out what the hell is Singularity University. Singularity University is a California benefit corporation, part university, part think tank, part business incubator located in Silicon Valley whose aim is to quote, educate, inspire, and empower leaders to apply exponential technologies to address humanity's grand challenges, close quote. It was founded in 2008 by Ray Kurzweil, Peter Diamandis, and I don't know who Peter is, but of course Ray Kurzweil being uh, one of the founders of Singularity University. Yes, uh, Singularity University aims to develop a global network of innovation ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Yes, bringing together a coalition of entrepreneurs, business leaders, universities, government agencies, and nonprofits. Yes, business leaders and government agencies, otherwise known as the Rock Center of Corporate Governance. And they're going to be taking on humanity's grand challenges, such as water scarcity and energy uh, consumption. Jesus, then it breaks all this down. Uh, let's see, let's get down to the bottom of this. Uh, I wish, who are the corporate founding partners? Gee, take a wild guess on the number one founding, uh, the number one corporate founding partner. That would be Google. Google. And don't forget some of the others. Nokia. Here is LinkedIn. And Genetech. Among others. So there you go. Uh, it looks like me and Alex Jones and Chris Hedges and Noam Chomsky have our work cut out for us. Smoke them if you got them, guys. Smoke them if you got them. And start printing up your lunch on your 3D printer. So I got to wrap up this rant because I have to go down and print up a, uh, a cheeseburger in paradise off of my computer as I look for a robot replacement for Sancho Panza in my elderly years as a pessimistic doomsday prophet and Luddite. Bye, guys. How do you think, you little elderly companion? Sancho Panza has asthma. 
Any ideas on what to do about an asthmatic dog? Oh boy, guess who's coming up the hill is, uh, if you saw my rant a couple days ago about these clueless morons on their little ORVs. Here comes the army of clueless morons off the cruise ship to run donuts around these beautiful pristine beaches in paradise. That is the sound of technological innovation in the 21st century. Clueless morons tearing up turtle nesting beaches. Bye guys.